Welcome to this new episode of The Context that is going to talk about the context as an example of a process. Well, even before a process, an idea that becomes a process because it is well understood and can be implemented And only when it is well understood and is implemented through iterative processes, it can become a workflow that can scale, is reliable, and in those parts where it is appropriate, can be automated. I started the context after a conversation with my friend Massimo Curatella in Rome. And episode zero, very short, is announcing the project. It was a few months ago, and I am very happy and very proud that actually we have been able to produce every week, reliably, a new episode of about 20 minutes, half an hour, on so many different subjects. We spoke about cryptocurrencies and Facebook's announcement of Libra. We spoke about electric vehicles and uh, Tesla, 21st century life design skills, populism and the politics of uh, demagoguery. What are the analogies of scuba diving and going to space? Digital governance and regulations, telepresence mimes and avatars, memetics and emotions, and so many other topics. For me, it was just a pure joy to have the privilege of of expressing my ideas, hopefully in a coherent fashion, and have uh, people listen, give me feedback, ask me questions, suggest improvements. Last week, when I was at a conference, a lot of people came to me to congratulate me because they watched the context and uh, at the beginning they weren't sure, but then they would see week after week the new episodes coming out and they were reconsidering. They were saying to themselves, wow, there must be something going on here, actually. David is dedicating a lot of effort to this. Let me pay more attention. And they liked what they saw or heard, and uh, they wanted to express their gratitude and, and their, uh, uh, their, 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 their liking uh, what, they, what they were following. But of course, it is not just me. I have an entire team that is, that is helping me. And today I want to illustrate the, the process and the, describe you the secret sauce of the context, uh, but just as an example, right, of going from an idea to an MVP and then trying to keep improving progressively, adding features in a lean fashion, testing and experimenting. So, We have um, an entire 10-page document entitled The Context Production Instructions. And we, we wrote this document just a couple of weeks ago, exactly because it wouldn't have made sense writing it at the beginning. We didn't necessarily knew. Uh, uh, we didn't necessarily know what what we were doing and and how it would be done. So as of today, the document talks about the various phases of shooting, editing, and uploading, creating video thumbnails, tags, and descriptions, the teaser images and 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 sentences, uh, filling the episode sheet creating the anchor document, the transcript document, the highlights, title, description, and translation, creating the Patreon posts, the blog posts, the teaser posts, the final posts, and sending out the English and non-English language versions of uh, the newsletter. Because, of course, 
yes, there is a place where the context lives. And this uh, used to be mainly, chiefly, and then more almost uniquely Patreon. But in reality, the uh, home of, uh, of uh, the videos is, is YouTube itself. And the unlisted video can be accessed through Patreon, which is uh, where I want you to come so that you can decide if you want to, to become a paid supporter of the, of the series. And so it is out of that original source that everything else gets built. We shoot typically on Wednesdays. Today is Wednesday, and editing and uploading happens on Thursday. My friend Emil uh, is uh, responsible for shooting and editing and uploading, and uh, he's also shooting uh, backstage images uh, that are then uh, taken, and uh, they are, for example, uh, used by Graciela, who's in Venezuela, to uh, create the teaser image. And the teaser image uh, is uploaded typically on uh, Friday on LinkedIn, my Facebook page, Instagram, and uh, I'm sure I'm forgetting something, and that is why I go now to the episode sheet, which is a spreadsheet listing in the various columns everything that uh, we, we use. Yes, as a matter of fact, the teaser also goes on YouTube, which now allows you to post uh, still photos and have uh, stories similarly to, to other platforms. And then we also have Twitter, and um, that's, I think, about it. So, obviously, all the documents, the spreadsheet, the um, instructions, um, the description, and so on and so forth, live in shared online collaborative folders. My team uses Google um, tools, so this is a Google Drive folder with Google Docs and Google Sheets and everything else inside, but of course it could be anything but attaching documents to emails being sent back and forth. That is not something that you do at the end of the second decade of the third millennium. Um, obviously, I pick the subject that I will cover every week. And I churn in my mind ideas. I absorb stimulating things. Uh, I realize uh, that uh, maybe some subject deserves a, a, a different view from before. And then, sometimes, not always, I create a little outline of what I want to talk about as a reference. And I keep it on my computer in front of me. I don't use a teleprompter, even though we tested it once. And you may want to try to identify which single episode of the context is recorded using a teleprompter. The style is a little bit different. Certainly the sentences are shorter and the enunciation is more like uh, an actor rather than spontaneous, uh, even though I, I do try to be as spontaneous as I can. But most of the time, as I sit down, I look at the outline and I just start talking, hoping that what I say will make sense. After the recording is complete, we send the audio for automated transcription. These tools are these days extremely reliable, and there are many of them. Uh, these days we are using Rev, rev.com, that for $0.1 per minute, almost nothing, 
creates an editable transcript that also highlights the words that you may want to discard because they are the ums and the ahs that uh, many of us, including me, inadvertently insert in our speech. It can export the document in many different formats. And it also has a higher cost, still very inexpensive, $1 per minute captioning or subtitling uh, option two that I don't currently employ. Exporting this raw transcript allows me to create the description. The description that is going to go on the YouTube video, on the newsletter, in the blog post, on the davidorban.com website. And as of right now, I also take care of the translation of the description. I use Google Translate to accelerate the process, and uh, then I go through with the final correction. Right now, we are producing uh, these pieces of written content in uh, uh, Italian beyond English. But uh, I am playing with the idea to also start providing it in other languages. Um, easy is, of course, Spanish. Uh, I am a native Hungarian speaker, so that would be easy as well. But uh, it could be very cool to have it in uh, Chinese or Arabic or things like that. And then... Once I am done with uh, the description and a few other snippets like the text preview for the newsletter and uh, the, the little sentence fragment that is on the top left side of the newsletter and other things like that, I can hand it over uh, to Mauro. Mauro, who is uh, also my executive assistant and who is going to take care from then onwards of basically everything. Certain things can be scheduled for publication and the patrons, those who honor me and my team uh, by paying on Patreon, receive in advance the episode on everybody else on Saturday. And uh, so the scheduling of the publication of this advanced viewing, as well as on Sunday, the publication uh, for anybody to see the episode on Patreon for um, the rest of the world, including the newsletters that go out to about 15,000 subscribers as of right now, and if you are not a subscriber yet of my newsletter, you are welcome to, to become one. Uh, you can uh, subscribe on my, on my uh, website, of course, uh, and uh, then you will receive an alert uh, that a new episode of uh, The Context is available, as well as other information, for example, where I am going to be over the course of the next few weeks if uh, you want to meet uh, at the particular conference or city that I will be traveling to. So this is what happens on Sunday. One of the changes that uh, we implemented recently is that the YouTube videos used to be unlisted, which means that you need it to be either coming to the website or read one of my tweets or receive the newsletter. And that is how you would be able to find the episode. But uh, there was no other means. Instead, starting a few weeks ago, I progressively made public all the episodes, starting with episode one. And we are now with episode 22. And we are caught up. So now what happens is that the latest episode is unlisted and the paying patrons receive it on Saturday. Everybody else through the newsletter or visiting the blog 
or visiting Patreon itself can see it on Sunday, and then the video is made public for all of YouTube uh, to be recommended watching it through YouTube's algorithm, of course, on Monday. And this is, I think, a good example of how we are experimenting and evolving uh, the, uh, the whole process and the details. One of uh, the things that we uh, have been asked to do, and we will be doing it as soon as uh, possible, is to provide the episodes not only in a video form, but also in a podcast form. And it almost never happens, at least not to me, that I watch a lot of videos in a row from a pay- playlist without intervening in the, in the meantime. But it does happen to me that uh, I listen to several episodes of a podcast when I'm driving, when I'm cutting grass, or when I'm doing the dishes, and, and occupations like this, um, which I'm sure you are uh, doing as well, that are extremely appropriate for you to get entertained uh, through listening, but don't occupy you like watching something that is, makes it very hard to do anything else. So, next step, the context is going to be available in a audio version as well. Other things that we are considering is to move away from Patreon and host the option of becoming a, a paying um, supporter of the context directly on my website. There are many reasons. Uh, a few months ago, there was uh, some controversy around uh, certain positions that Patreon took. I don't remember the, re- the details. Some um, users of uh, Patreon left the platform out of principle. Others stayed. And um, there are pros and cons to the decision. We will see. We may do that. And then we will ask kindly the existing patrons to move over and maintain their uh, their uh, subscription on uh, directly my my website. We are likely to be using Stripe uh, to do that. My website is based on WordPress. There are fantastic plugins for uh, processing uh, credit card payments. Um, Hopefully, there will be some of you who want to do crypto payments in Bitcoin or Ether. Why not? And uh, we may uh, try to support those as well. Another future development that I am happy to pre-announce, and uh, crossing fingers, I'm not going to be wrong about it, is uh, that the context should also become a book. Because once we provide the raw transcript, which is accessible to uh, the patrons immediately, we also go through an editing phase of the transcript so that it is easier to read uh, rather than the type of expression that one uses. Even if I try to carefully formulate the sentences that are meant to be, to be listened to. So, the edited transcript of a context episode is about two, three thousand words, and 20 episodes, I can assure you, is a quite uh, nice uh, volume, and I am talking to my publisher, and they seem to be inclined to, to want to also publish it. Of course, we are now at season one. And uh, when we started, we didn't even know how many episodes uh, we would be shooting. I don't think uh, any of us uh, thought that we could keep it going as consistently as we have. And sooner or later, we will stop season one and then restart with uh, season two. 
It may be in the next few weeks and uh, we will take a little bit of a break. What I am likely to do, actually, is to keep shooting and then publish those episodes knowing that we have a little bit of a desirable backlog that uh, uh, we can use and then catch up, but knowing that uh, the weekly rhythm can uh, follow nicely. What I also want to do is to start engaging in live sessions. Many of you uh, have asked for that, and uh, I want to make sure that I deliver on that uh, desire as well. So there will be some opportunity for live interaction, and uh, I have been recommended using uh, Facebook or using YouTube or using Twitch or using uh, whatever else. Uh, PewDiePie uh, adopted uh, some uh, recent uh, crypto-based uh, platform uh, called DLife, and that is completely gaming-oriented, so the kind of audience that is there uh, is, is really about uh, live streaming games. At least uh, I did take a look, and, and I also have an account, so I don't know how successful I would be to be a live uh, user of, of DLife. Or we may experiment with the so-called restreaming platforms that allow you to um, record and then have a simulcast of your stream on a lot of things simultaneously. I noticed some people using it for uh, LinkedIn, uh, for example, and uh, it looks uh, a quite inclusive way of, of going about it, even though I don't understand how one then could uh, monitor the questions that arrive across the three, four platforms that are covered all together. So I hope that you enjoyed this insight into the workflow and the production process that goes into the context uh, every week uh, with help from Emil and Mauro and Graciela. Uh, and uh, once again, it is an example of how you can take an idea, start executing on it, improving it, incorporating new features, and uh, really achieve wonderful results. Too many people come and meet me and uh, they are jealous of their ideas, they don't share it or they don't want other people to know how they do what they do. I believe in openness and have always been rewarded in my sharing of ideas, actions, platforms, connections, networks. <coughs> and uh, I hope you share this uh, view or you get inspired by it and then you test it. <coughs> I have always been in favor of open sharing of ideas, methodologies, platforms, networks, connections, and I hope you do the same or you are inspired by this example to start doing it. One of the wonderful advantages is that you quickly go out and test what it works, what works, and, and discard what doesn't work. But also, you immediately are able to get in touch with people who resonate with what you do or your message, your idea, who self-select and who are extremely eager to be able and uh, collaborate with you, either become part of your team or become a business partner or become a part of a network independently, but in a coordinated fashion, working towards the same goal. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Context. And feel free to 
join many others who have become supporters on Patreon. And I am looking forward to welcome you to our next episode in a week.